I am primarily going to start with you, Ms. Thomas. I'm going to be delivering a series of rapid-fire questions at you. I'll be asking whether you agree with the statement or not. It would elicit a yes or a no. I'm not seeking an explanation. You'd agree with me that this country is bound by the rule of law? Yes. That every Canadian, including the Prime Minister, his Cabinet, senior public servants, and, and most importantly, the Department of Justice, is also bound by the rule of law? Yes. And no one, including the Prime Minister, is above that law, correct? Correct. Now, I'm going to be delivering a series of statements uh, from former Cabinet Minister Perrin Beatty, the Chief Architect of the Emergencies Act, that this committee should press for this committee should press for any information to help Canadians understand the rationale for invocation and test against both the facts and the deliberately high threshold that is required. Do you believe that? Yes that the Emergencies Act is a blunt instrument because it is used where contingencies can't be managed effectively in any other way. Agree? The Emergency Act is a charter compliant. Do you agree? I, I, it's more complex than a yes-no answer. Thank you. That if invoking the Act made law enforcement easier, the issue is whether the deliberately high threshold was met, not whether the powers given were useful, or in other words, whether the powers they already had could have resolved the problem. Do you agree with that? That's how it was used. That in relation to freezing bank accounts of people associated with the protests, new government powers should be conferred in a time of calm, not by regulation drawn up in a crisis. Do you agree with that? Yes. That police were called upon to deal with a breakdown in our political system. Agree? No. That if government were to avoid much more serious emergencies in the future, they must restore a civility to our politics that allows us once again to disagree strongly on issues without seeing one another as enemies. Agree? I'm not a politician. Do you agree? I would agree, but I'm not a politician. Thank you. That our body politic is wounded at the present time. We need to heal those wounds. We need to do it by treating each other as Canadians with respect. <clears throat> We need to do it in such a way that sets aside partisan differences and puts the national interest first. Do you agree with that statement? Yes. That the obligation of Parliament at this point is to do everything it can to try and heal the divisions that have been created. Agree? I'm not a parliamentarian. Would you agree with me that one of the most important roles of a Prime Minister is to unite Canadians and not divide them by engaging in name-calling? Prime you agree? Minister should protect Canadians. Do you agree? Protect Canadians. Do you, do you agree that the I, Prime Minister should not be name-calling? I'm not going to comment on that. Okay. You are aware at the inquiry the Prime Minister stated that he did not call people who are unvaccinated names. You aware of that statement? Yes, I heard that statement. Would you agree with me that the Prime Minister stated on Quebec television in September 2021 that there are people who are fiercely opposed to vaccination who do not believe in science who are mis misogynistic, often are racist, that there are not many of them, but they take up a lot of space. As a leader, as a country, do we tolerate these people or do we say, come on? He repeated those same talking points during the unnecessary 2021 federal election. Do you agree that he made those statements? I did not personally hear those statements. With apologies. Would you agree with me that either the Prime Minister has a problem, a significant problem with his memory, or he deliberately and intentionally misled the inquiry? Madam Chair, I don't think that this is fair questioning. Your time is up. Well, she can answer the question. It's not up to her, this witness, Point to order, question the Madam validity Chair, and the we relevancy. We do not need commentary on the witness's do I, testimony. Do I still, the witness's testimony Can I just stands. give her an opportunity to answer? Thank you. I'm not sure what the question was. Madam I can Chair. repeat the question, Madam Chair. She asked to repeat the question, and I, with, with the Chair's permission, I would like to repeat the question, Mr. Nackney. Would you agree with me that either the Prime Minister has a significant problem with his memory, or that he Madam deliberately Madam Chair, I didn't hear a ruling on whether he should repeat the question. So can you make a ruling, please, Madam Chair? I, I did, actually. I told him to go ahead. And can I repeat the question without being interrupted by the Liberal uh, Minister, uh, the Liberal... Uh, we, we, would you kindly proceed so that we can I will proceed on? without interruption. Thank you, Chair. Would you agree with me that either the Prime Minister has a significant problem with his memory 
or he deliberately and intentionally misled the Rouleau inquiry? I believe that's a pejorative question. I won't answer it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Back to you, Ms. Thomas. Same style of questions. <laughs> same style of questions. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe the same answers. Who knows? Yeah. You would agree that when it comes to determining whether the government was really acting as a last resort because no other law would do, it's the Prime Minister's own explanation that matters? No. It's broader than that. Would you agree that the government's own legal interpretation of those things that can only be evaluated according to the Prime Minister? Prime Minister's testimony because all the legal opinions have not been released. You'll have to ask that again. I'm sorry. Justice Rulo, in his opening remarks at the inquiry, stated that uncovering the truth is the most important goal. When difficult events occur that impact the lives of Canadians, the public has a right to know what happened. Recall that? I do. The Prime Minister promised Canadians when first elected in 2015 that they would see the most open and transparent government ever seen. Yet this inquiry has seen hundreds upon hundreds of redacted pages from the government with little explanation as to the legal basis for such exclusion. Would you agree that the actions of the Prime Minister and Cabinet Ministers who have testified at the inquiry have frustrated numerous lawyers in their ability to drill down to the truth as to the legal basis for the invocation of the act. I think that the Prime Minister and Ministers being you on agree the or stand not? was extraordinarily transparent. Do you agree? I Madam do not Chair, agree. The Thank you. Be allowed to answer the question? <clears throat> Inquiry lawyer Gordon Campbell stated, we have from the beginning of this proceeding through till now attempted to find a way to lift the veil that has made such a black box of what has turned out to be a central issue before the hearing. We just regret that it ends up being an absence of transparency on the part of the government. Do you recall that statement? Not specifically, no. Do you agree that Justice Minister Lametti testified at the inquiry that the government didn't use the legal definition within the Emergencies Act but rather use their own reasons, but could not release it due to solicitor and client privilege. You're aware of that? I did not see all of Minister Lametti's testimony. You're aware that no government official, all the ministers and the prime minister, are talking about solicitor and client privilege as a basis for not releasing those legal opinions. You're certainly aware of that. Solicitor client Thank privilege. Thank you. Justice Rulo pressed Minister Lametti on this issue, asking how he would understand and pass judgment on the legal basis for invoking the Emergencies Act, which is a central issue in the Commission, when the government was not forthcoming on the legal rationale. He then said, quote, I guess the answer is we just assume they acted in good faith in application of whatever they were told. Last question. Do you agree with me that the government response of just trust us, we acted in good faith when invoking the Emergencies Act, is the complete opposite of being open and transparent with Justice Rouleau, but most importantly with Canadians? Do you agree with that statement or not? Solicitor client privilege is a long standing protocol. Do in you this agree country. with that statement, ma'am? Solicitor client privilege. Do you agree, yes or no? I'm not answering that. Thank you. I cede the rest of my time to my colleague. Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Madam Chair, and to my colleague. And just to the ITAC, uh, would you agree that uh, contrary to the suggestions from uh, Ms. Bendayan, that they are, there are individuals and groups uh, that attach themselves to a protest and try to use that protest for their own ideological a purpose. Would you suggest, would you agree with that statement? The suggestion has been made by Ms. Bendayan that the people in Coots were somehow protesters, but they were not. The RCMP has confirmed that. Madam Chair, I never made such a suggestion. Oh, you did. Anyway, um, Madam Chair, I'd like to uh, take this opportunity for the, for the time that I have left and beyond to move the motion that was circulated to the committee. Uh, and I will... Um, uh, I will just uh, advise that uh, the intent is to, to briefly explain what it is for those who uh, may not know and to adjourn the debate on that until uh, at a, at a, a time uh, next meeting. Point of order. 
So I want to I want to be clear uh, through you, Madam Chair, procedurally, that the um, the Mr. Motts is using his time or is is taking his time for the intervention to to table the, or give notice, because if I'm correct, the correct amount of um, notice time prior to the meeting did not elapse, and therefore procedurally, um, he can't table it and then adjourn it. Those are different things. Providing a notice verbally is one thing. Tabling it and adjourning it is another. Uh, Mr. Motts, I believe that uh, the proper terminology would be just to give notice. I thought that's what we had. Uh, okay, f fair enough. Uh, I will uh, give notice that uh, we will table this motion. And, and, and here's here's the, the idea behind it. This Mr. Motts, I just uh, I'll, I'll stop. I just want to inform you of about 25 seconds left. No, but this is not part of my intervention. This is the moving of a motion. It's mo oh, okay. Pardon me. Then I thought it was. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, an area of significant discussion that we've had at this committee has been whether the necessary threshold uh, for the government to declare a, a public order emergency under the Emergencies Act has actually been satisfied. So the matter of the interpretation of those thresholds, including especially the so-called Madam Chair, just threshold. on a point of order, I'm, I'm not, I believe Mr. Motz is explaining the rationale behind it, the Briefly, notice yes. he's giving us. Yes. That's, he's meant to be doing that during the, the remaining portion of his questioning time. Which is apparently 25 seconds, according to what you just said. Uh, I'm informed that it doesn't count in your question time, but I'm wondering, Mr. Motts, if you can make it as brief as possible yes. since a notice of motion. Uh, I, absolutely. I'd be done already, have we not been interrupted so often, Madam Chair. Um, the matter of the interpretation of, this, of these thresholds, uh, including especially the so-called CESAS Act threshold, about what constitutes a threat to the security of Canada has lately become a central issue in the proceedings before the Public Order Emergency Commission. We will all recall that when the Attorney General uh, was here uh, of Canada, appeared before a committee on April 26th, he insisted upon solicitor client privilege when questioned about these thresholds. In face of this claim Madam on Chair, May 31st, our committee ordered the production of all legal opinions uh, upon which the Mr. government Mott, determined. No consequence to the witnesses before us. If he has a question for the witnesses. Mr. Motts, can you wrap up the notice of motion, please? We can yes. debate it next week. I'm not debating it. I'm just simply introducing the motion or, or, or this particular uh, motion that's going to be before us next week for, um, for those who might not understand what it is we're asking for. Uh, the transparency to Canadians is what I'm after here. Obviously, those who are opposed to this can are anxious about transparency. I appreciate. I appreciate. Uh, what would you continue? Please? Thank you. Um, evidence heard in the last few days at the Commission has made it clear that the government adopted for itself a broader interpretation of the CESAS Act threshold than CESAS itself employs to justify declaring, declaring a national emergency. The Director of CESAS confirmed that this was done on the strength of a legal opinion prepared by the Department of Justice. The Commission's efforts to probe these, uh, these issues further has been repeatedly stonewalled by the government. Madam, Madam Chair, I believe Mr. he's Cameron simply remarked. reading from a cover letter that he distributed to all of us. We've all got that letter. Yeah. So this if that's the notice, then we don't need to be listening to this. Notice. We've got it's it. It's not to you, Mr. Nackvi. Then it can be discussed next week as Mr. we just Varani. agreed, Madam Chair. This is absolutely unacceptable. Mr. Motts, can I just ask you to wrap up? I think you've got Absolutely. a fair bit on the record already. Our, com our committee is uniquely positioned to assist to get answers for both the Commission and Canadians and the lawful uh, the law of parliamentary pri privilege possessing a constitutional nature. Um, our committee and the House power Madam supersede Chair, statutory law If you and have other made privileges. a ruling, As then such, it could be challenged and I so challenge that ruling, Madam Chair. I do not understand what is happening to this committee. Reading a two-page letter into the record does not constitute a notice of motion. Okay. Mr. March, you're finished? Uh, with the Commission's report being tabled in less than a finish? month. you Pardon me? I'm asking you to finish there. Yes. Just yes. Um, okay, thank you. I'm done. Yes. I believe I believe you've covered it. Thank you.